Hi, Dan Olds again here with uh, Doug, Donald Pierce with McCoy. Is it McCoy? Yes. Right? yes. And let me get a look at your big bubble here. This is a huge blow up dome, and I got a demo here yesterday, and it blew me away. It's just incredible 3D. Oh, thank you. And I can't show them on film what it is, but I wanted to uh, stop back by and talk to you and, and get a look at what you're doing technically here. Right, right. Well, um, originally, uh, my background's in feature film, uh, and we uh, had the idea that... You are a good-looking guy. So would we have seen you in anything? Uh, no, no. I was the director. I was but I was okay, always well, behind, back in, the, back in the trenches working on the Really not that good-looking. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> not good okay. enough. No. Um, but anyway, uh, what we did was um, we actually came up with the concept of how, you know, the holodeck from Star Trek. Yeah. How can we do that? You See, know? holodeck from Star Trek, you are talking to our audience now. Absolutely. Beautiful stuff. Nice. I mean, we're not dealing with transporter technology or any of that not stuff. Not yet. Not but yet. But what we said is how can we create the illusion, the visual yeah. illusion of being in a fully immersive space? That's what got to me, was yeah. how immersive it Absolutely. was. Absolutely. Now, one of the first things that we looked at, and... You know, uh, I hadn't dealt with the physics of the optics for panorama versus mm -hmm. stereo. And it, as you've seen in Omnimax theaters yeah. in the past, you have this sweet spot at the front of the theater. Yes. You know, and then you look off the side and there's nothing there. It's all yeah. goes 2D. Well, we were like, well, how can we improve on that? So what we did is we actually made a breakthrough. We did this, it was actually we realized that it was supposed to be physically impossible. And I always say I'm glad we didn't know that because <laughs> we were able to break through that barrier. Whereas panoramic imagery has a single focal point okay. that you stitch everything together. That's how you take your camera and okay. go into Photoshop and okay. make a panorama. And then stereo, but stereo has two focal points. So when you try to go in a panorama, that they orbit those focal points orbit each other as you're turning around the space. Okay, which creates extreme parallax issues in the image, which effectively, for the layman, it tears either the background or the foreground apart, and there's no way, based on... You just uh, can't make it look right. Yeah, based on some of the leading optical physicists that I've talked to, they said, no, this is impossible. Well, we actually were able to find a way to break through that barrier. In 2005, we won the world's best technology gold trophy oh, for really? this breakthrough. Okay. And so what we can do is we, now with through our optics, and what we did first was actually built this. Okay, built a yeah. Camera. Let's get a look at this. Now get this in on one, that. This one actually is not the cam not the not the design we're using now. This was one of the first ones where we used 86 cameras, and we used but it took extensive post production stitching okay. and a special warping technique to be able to create the. True, so we have 86 cameras pairs. that were in the back of a truck there, yeah. making these pictures above. Yeah that are incredibly lifelike. Yeah. This is new and this yet is still. Times Square. That's Times Square. Live yeah. action. Live action. And if you're if you're standing in this environment, you literally feel like you're on Times Square. You, you add around, some sound, you add some around. smells. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And it's perfect. Okay. Absolutely. So anyway, we looked at this, we didn't feel it was practical as far okay. as the production side. Because you know, you have to be able to be cost effective in being able to sure. produce it. So then we went back into our research, uh, our research area, and said, "Okay, how do we take the next step?" And, and like you said before, too, that 86 cameras stitching that together is quite the computation. Absolutely, task. absolutely. Well, and just the volume of data that you're dealing with. Sure. You know. So anyway, we got back uh, to our studio and we said, "Okay, let's try, let's take this other approach, which is our new design, and we we have the IP that we've we've gone for and." locked in. Okay. But what that is, is how do we build a real-time live-action camera to do this without stitching? Really? So... You we, broke that? We, that? we broke through that barrier. That is what we're doing. And um, the thing is, is, you know, it, it was going to be very expensive, five yeah. to ten million dollars, to build this prototype. So instead, we actually went into the Cartesian universe, the computer, and we built it based on real-world physics, as if we were doing product design. Okay. And we built this camera exactly as we we would build it in the real world. Really. And we basically, to, in order to test it. So you we, simulated it. Yeah, we simulated, but okay. based on real-world attributes. Sure. Yeah. So then we actually plugged it into a rendering patch, uh, rendering uh, package, 3D Studio Max, using mental image, mm -hmm. uh, mental ray uh, rendering, and we were which. We would trace all the rays, yeah. you know, and we actually hit the button. It came out perfect. Yeah. This is actually scoliosis of the bone, that an animation that we did. And uh, one of those is left eye, right eye, right? Right. One okay. is left eye, right eye. 
So in this image, and this is fisheye, we also do equirectangular for multi-projection systems. This would be for a single projector solution. Okay. And so, but for every pixel in this Im image, throughout the entire sphere, there's a corresponding stereo pixel. Wow. And, and since it is completely around you in stereo, it becomes volumetric. Whereas Avatar, for example, yeah. or any 3D movie, yeah. they have to manipulate the IOD because convergence happens at the screen. What's the IOD? Interocular separation. Okay. Um, okay. The separation between your eyes. Like you a know. stereo effect. Yeah. It's a stereo two, effect. Two and a half inches average you know, okay. interocular separation, which gives you that stereo depth. So in a, in a normal 3D movie, convergence happens on the screen level. So 3D is behind the screen, but there's no 3D in front of the screen. And the reason is, if okay. you saw, like Avatar, the home yeah. tree, when the home tree is burning, the flakes come through and it looks so beautiful. It was, I compliments, it was the most wonderful 3D experience I've had in the theater. Yeah. The thing is, the way they do those in-your-face effects is they have to work on the interaxial and IOD and warp that and push that, force that object out into the theater. We don't have to do any of that. We don't force anything. Since we're spherical, the inside of the theater is volumetric. Okay. So one-to-one okay. -one relationship, we don't we don't have the issues with, you know, if you don't do it right, getting headaches or anything else. It's totally passive. We, uh, we can bring things right through the theater. You can look and you can follow a bird flying by you. You can do whatever you want. You, know, uh, the, the thing, you are in the movie. The thing with this, literally. in the demo that you have, and again, it's, it's too bad that... Uh, you can't really capture it on 2D video. Right. But there are so many applications. What sure. are you guys going after? What's the oh, future we, for this? Well, as I said, our core technology is the optics itself. Mm -hmm. Our first adopters are in the entertainment industry. That makes we're sense. Looking at, we're looking at special events, large portable theaters that will move around. That makes planetariums, sense. Planetariums, things like that. Amusement parks, perhaps. Uh, amusement parks, ride okay. show. We're working with several of the large studios on some ride show um, attractions currently. Um, so great stuff. But what's really exciting, and that's why we're at the GPU conference today, is the movement toward ray trace rendering and real-time images. Imagine your Xbox, imagine your PlayStation, your Wii system, where you can either put on a headset or have a portable little dome in your home where you can go in and you are in the movie. There's no more of this little box stuff where you're looking through a porthole, you know, trying to play your game. You are literally inside the game. And you can look what? around full volumetric. It's the Matrix. That's... That's something. That's incredible. I'm yeah. thinking also, you know, training. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Any sort of simulation. Yeah. It's an incredible thing. Absolutely. Education. Absolutely. We're porn, working on several. It's government all there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But incredible stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, well, uh, so what we have is a middleware core technology that can be ported out into all these markets. That's that's. that's very we're cool. real excited about what. We're going to see anything publicly soon. We have any idea? Um, I mean, how far out are we looking? Uh, that I would say that you know we're pushing as hard as we can with our with our partners. And, okay. And as I say, we have we have the technology and we're developing the pathways to applications, but we're looking for partners to create those applications. And, and we will support them. Um, as, uh, you know, as what I like to say is, you know, what Dolby did with noise reduction algorithms mm -hmm. to become a standard, you yeah, know, the standard, the standard yeah. for noise reduction in, in audio, we have a format that we're pushing to become the standard in one of the standard 3D image formats in the future. Well, good luck. Well, Great stuff, much. and thanks for the All demo. Right. I appreciate it. Sure, Bye -bye. sure. Absolutely.